you know, you went to a, a few WWE shows and you've been to all sorts of wrestling shows across the country. Tell me about, you know, your adventures traveling around the U S and who are some of the people that you've met, uh, that you want to care to share about? Um, well, this is a cool story. So, um, back in the early eighties, when, uh, Hulk Hogan first started coming to St. Louis. I had become friends with him. There was a photographer that knew him and introduced us. So we became friends and I would pick him up at the airport and take him where he needed to go. We'd go out to dinner, we'd go to the gym and I hadn't seen him in over 30 years or even spoken to him. And a couple of months ago, I was on the phone with uh, Brian Blair and um, Brian had mentioned that he was coming to his house the next day and I said oh Brian I said please tell him I said hello I said he probably won't remember me well anyway the next day he was he was there and Brian had to call me for something and I said hey did Hulkster show up and he said hang on so he puts me on speakerphone and Hulk says who am I speaking with and I said an old friend from St. Louis, Darla, I said, you probably don't remember me. And he said, oh, yes, I do. He said, when I first met you, you had a 19, or he didn't say what year. He said, you had a Buick LeSabre, and I love that car. And then you traded it in on a brand new Camaro. And I hated that car because I had to recline the seat back in order to fit. And he was right. He hated that car. So I knew that he remembered me and it was, it was really cool getting to talk to him for a few minutes, but yeah, I've traveled to all over you, Illinois and Missouri, Tennessee. I was at Memphis quite a bit because I'd go down there to see the Gilberts. Um, I've been to Houston, Texas. I met Paul Bosch. Mm -hmm. He was another promoter that was very similar to Sam Mushnick. We were there in 1981 for a WFIA convention, which was wrestling fans. Paul rolled the red carpet out for us. He was, he was wonderful, him and his family and the wrestlers of his territory. I actually, that was the first time I had met Bruce Pritchard. He was a teenager, was oh, not even thinking about wrestling then. Um, and uh, Tom had just started the business. Nice, nice guys. Traveled a lot to N Indianapolis to uh, Dick the Bruiser shows. I was in California with the Kelly twins and went to shows there. Um yeah, just all over the place. Wow. And I have probably met every wrestler that ever worked in St. Louis for Sam. I uh, am probably the only female that was never a fan of the Von Erichs. And, you know, hmm. St. Louis loved the Von Erichs, but I just never was a big Why? fan of theirs. I, I don't know. I mean... I liked David. I was friends with David. I mean, it wasn't that I disliked him or anything. I just, I don't know. I, by that time I was cheering for the heels. I got gotcha. you. I just never was a fan of theirs. Um, Jack Briscoe was the very first wrestler that I ever met and became friends with. And um, I am still very good friends with his brother, Jerry. In fact, I'll get to see him in St. Louis. Um, Brian Blair is one of my closest friends. So yeah, the list just goes on and on. Yeah. And I think that's another thing about back in the territory days and the venues being, I mean, the keel wasn't that small, but smaller than where they have things today. Sure. And, you know, the wrestlers would stay and, you know, you got to become friends with them and seeing them at the TV tapings. And they would associate with you. I don't think the guys today do that. Hmm. I I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't hear anything like that going on after their big shows and stuff. You know, they're 
probably going back to their room and playing video games. I don't know. Yeah, they're but, on they're on the road a lot. I mean, yeah, they're not. That's and, true too. And you know, social media has definitely made it like harder, I guess, or easier depending on you know how you feel about it. It's like they have their own social media pages. And they've got a lot of followers and fans, but it's 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 different, I feel like, than actually getting to meet them. And, you know, they've got security, I'm sure, in the oh, ho- yeah. near their hotel, you know, because you know you're going to get fans that are going to want to get autographs and pictures and all exactly. that stuff. So it's, it's a I mean, very different time now. Yeah, it is. And, you know, the Million Dollar Man, most people, that's how they know Ted is – he was the million dollar man. I've known Ted and I used, I used to tell him this and he'd laugh and he's, I'd say, people know you as the million dollar man. I knew you when you didn't have a buck 98 to your name. And he'd laugh and <laughs> says, that's a true story. Cause you know, he got a big push in St. Louis. He, uh, really? oh yeah. Sam Mushnick adored Ted DiBiase hmm. and, um, yeah, Ted, he was our Missouri State champion a couple different times. And, uh, yeah, Sam really gave him a big push in St. Louis. And one of the first places where he got his start, not his start, but his big push start. Yeah, that's that's an amazing story because uh, he definitely had a heck of a career in the WWF, WWE, and uh, I believe he also was in WCW for a time. Yeah. Um, Ted DiBiase, you know, he had the million dollar belt. He had Virgil uh, as his manager. Uh, but before all that, wow. Do you remember when uh, Sapphire left Dusty and went over to Ted? Yeah. You know, she yeah. got her, she got her start with her. Really? And Sapphire was my very best friend in the whole world. Oh. And yeah. I'm, I miss her, but she uh, she started wrestling with Herb as uh, Prince, Princess Dark Cloud. Hmm. That's really cool. 